Good morning everyone, welcome, welcome veterans, spouses of veterans, guests, friends, and comrades. This morning we will be celebrating the life of Her Majesty, Queen Mother, uh, Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, we appreciate your attendance and we will be going through a, an order of service and um, we should be done in about 20 minutes, hopefully. So uh, thank you again for coming. First of all, we will sing O Count. This time I would like to ask for two minutes of silence in remembrance of the Queen.
Thank you. They shall not grow old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we shall remember them. We shall remember them. We join with people around the world in remembering our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth. 
The Queen died on September the 8th, 2022, at the age of 96, in her Scottish residence of Balmoral. Let us pray in thanksgiving for the life of Elizabeth, our Queen. Loving God, we thank you for the wisdom of her guidance and her love of peace, for the care and devotion with which she served her people, and the example of her gracious life. May our hearts remember her goodness and prompt us to serve you better in our life's work here on earth. May Her Late Majesty rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. A prayer for the royal family. Dear, deal graciously, dear Lord, with all who mourn, especially the members of the royal family. May they cast all their cares upon you and know the consolation of your love. In Jesus' name, amen and a prayer for our new king. Everlasting God, we pray for our new king, Charles III. May you bless his reign and the life of our nation. Help us to work together so that truth and justice, harmony and fairness flourish among us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. And let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. This time, I'd like to play, place the uh, flowers on the Seneca, place the wreath with Vice President Comrade Sylvia Hayward, our Zone Commander, and Harry. Sergeant Rounds present the ring. I should have mentioned if we have troubles with the train coming through town or a garbage truck, um, I will stop for a few minutes and let it go by. Born Elizabeth Alexandra Mary, April the 25th, uh, 21st, 1926. The elder daughter of Prince Albert, Duke of York, and his wife, Lady Elizabeth Bosland. She had little chance of assuming the throne as her father was the younger son of King George V. But in 1936, her uncle, King Edward VIII, abdicated to marry an American divorcee, uh, Wallace Simpson. As a result, her father became King George VI, and a 10-year-old Lilibet, as she was known within the family, became the heir presumptive to the throne. 
1947, soon after the royal family returned from an official visit to South Africa and Rhodesia, they announced Elizabeth's engagement to Prince Philip of Greece, her third cousin, actually, and a lieutenant in the Royal Navy. She had her, her sights on him when she was only 13, and their relationship developed through visits and correspondence during the war. She became queen at 25 years of age after her father's death in 1952 and began a reign that was characterized by change and moral questioning that probed everything up to the privilege that gave her riches, fine jewelry, and palaces. A stoic public persona and unchanging personal style offered Britons and the Commonwealth unwaveringly consistent figurehead during unparalleled technology and cultural changes. Her closeness of love to Canada with 22 visits, the privilege of the RCMP leading the funeral procession from Westminster Abbey to Wellington Arch through London, followed behind will be the detachments from the armed forces of the Commonwealth, including troops from Canada, New Zealand and Australia. Many of you have probably been watching the service on television. Of course, there's a six hour time change between Manitoba and London, so the activities will be slowing down after His Majesty's internment. What a lovely lady. Probably the first program I ever saw on television when I was three years of age. This local school rented a television and they had the Queen's coronation on television. I think that was my first TV program I ever, ever watched. The visit to the Duke of Beaufort, and the Duke of Beaufort lives about 100 miles west of London, Babington Estate. And when I was young, we lived in that village. And the Queen, Prince Philip, Prince Charles, and Prince Anne, We'd be walking down the main driveway to the local shop, right past where we were playing on the street, without security. And um, it was also a great thing because we had access to the roll cards. And when you're little, then you get to go into the, any, any age of life. It's, it's something special. And the queen, always with a long coat on, a headscarf, walking stick and her Wellington boots. In th those days, probably 1954, no police security on, on their way to the village shop. This was the days before Edward and Andrew were born. I would like to also talk a little bit about the Royal Canadian Legion and their association with, with the Queen. When the First World War came to an end, Numerous veterans groups and regiments, association representing former service members were created. Despite their shared goals, efforts were fragmented and unsuccessful. An appeal for unity led to the formation of the Indian Veterans Alliance, and in Winnipeg in 1925, the Legion was funded as the Canadian Legion of the British Empire Service League, and it was incorporated in the Special Act of Parliament in 1926. But on December the 19th, 1960, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth gave the consent, consent to use the prefix royal, and the organization became the Royal Canadian Legion. I have to make reference to the Queen's being the head of the Church of England, her faith, her love of horses, and love of her corgi dogs. As one of the plain clothes police um, mentioned at one time, when they traveled with the Queen, he said, when the family get in a vehicle, they don't count the children, they count the corgis before they move. I'm sure all of you have been 
have special memories. Today, the final moments, the final look at the Queen, your thoughts of the Queen, and the public family. This is an extraordinary day. In London, the music, the weather, the marching, gun salutes, Big Ben chiming every minute, the crowds of people, the pomp and pageantry, the throwing of roses at the hearse as it makes its way to Windsor Castle. September the 8th, 2022, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth passed away at the age of 96. The longest service serving of British monarchs reigning for 70 years. Today, Queen Elizabeth II joins her husband, Prince Philip, at the King George VI Memorial Chapel and will be buried beside him. King Charles III has now taken over her position and duties. Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, <coughs> rest in peace. Thank you. We will now sing Long Live the King. First of all, benediction. Sorry. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us. This time we have poppies available if anyone would like to get get a poppy and lay on the cenotaph they're very welcome to please and thank you so much for your attendance thank you we will be meeting back at the club room and we welcome all of you there um, for coffee and uh, have a good day thank you Our party. Order. Yes, miss. I would also like to, I forgot to mention, uh, Constable uh, Terry Fair from the Nipah Detachment that came down and joined us. Thank you, sir. Pleasure having you here. Is there anyone that would like to say a few comments? Or we'll do that at the club. There's lunch at the club.